I welcome all of you on Europedia Education Channel. And you know, on Europedia, I keep on interacting with the visionaries, professors, industrialists, and uh, luminaries, erudite personalities, those who have got knowledge. And believe me, we must listen to them. We must gain from their experience. These people are full or full of knowledge. They are repository of knowledge. They are reservoir of vision and knowledge. And we must listen to them to gain something in our life. So I'm lucky to get opportunity to interact with such people. And uh, uh, today in one such interaction, uh, I'm going to interact today with the uh, one uh, luminary, one uh, personality, uh, visionary. And uh, that personality is Professor, uh, uh, Professor Ajit Kumar Chaturvedi, Director IIT Rudki. Uh, you will find him very, very learned uh, fellow, very, very uh, visionary uh, person. Though I could get less time to interact with sir because of his busy schedule, but yes, uh, he could answer more, uh, more or less all my uh, interaction points. And he could give very good, he uh, explained all the points very well, uh, very nicely he could explain that. Now, let me give you brief about uh, his uh, background, academic background. Professor Chaturvedi received his all three degrees, B.Tech, M.Tech, Ph.D. degrees in electrical engineering from IIT Kanpur only. Then he worked as faculty in BHU and then he came and joined as faculty in uh, IIT uh, Rudki and then IIT Kanpur and presently he is a director in IIT Kanpur. So as you can understand, he has vast experience of IIT system. Uh, starting from his B.Tech till his uh, directorship, he has vast experience of IIT system and not only one IIT system, but yes, IIT Kanpur, IIT Rudki, IIT BHU. So you can understand the kind of uh, uh, the journey sir has. So I, I had some kind of interaction points with him. I asked him that being alumni of IIT Kanpur, he graduated from IIT Kanpur, electrical department. So you can understand entire world is at your feet once you graduate in departments like IIT Kan uh, electrical engineering from institute like IIT Kanpur. So uh, why he preferred to be in India? That is what I asked him. He's a research area. I asked him, and uh, he is in IIT Rudki as director at the time of COVID when online semester is going on. What are the challenges? and opportunities and uh, Professor uh, uh, Chaturvedi told, uh, uh, explained in, during his interaction that uh, we should take it as opportunity. So during COVID, we were forced to go for online, but now it is going to become part of our alternate part of our learning system forever. So we have taken it as opportunity and we uh, made this particular entire learning experience uh, very well for the students. So uh, what are those things he discussed with me and research focus of IIT Rudki I discussed. I also discussed with him about Prime Minister Research Fellowship and uh, effect of COVID on uh, schedules of the semesters and uh, also certain other things I asked him about uh, how this uh, uh, academic activities in IIT Roorkee are going on, how IIT Roorkee is different from other IITs and what is the joint ventures or uh, uh, partnerships programs of IIT Roorkee with other universities like University of Alberta, uh, Canada then France and all these things. And then I asked him about DART scholarships and all. And uh, then a certain other scholarship for PhD students and how PhD uh, people can get motivated for be, uh, join PhD courses. That is also I discussed. And you know the uh, thumbnail or the most uh, beautiful line which I uh, uh, could tell you from the interaction with the Professor Ajit Kumar, I can tell you that. Uh, during one of the interacting interaction points, he says that if you're thinking about doing PhD, don't do it. You know what the meaning of this? Don't take it otherwise. The meaning of this is like PhD is a, uh, a degree. It is different from other degrees. Other degrees have a time limit. I mean, two years M Tech or something like that. But PhD, there's no time limit. There are uncertainties involved and already you have uh, studied for till masters. So you don't want to invest that time of your life into studies further. So there are uncertainties involved. So unless until you are committed, you are confident for what you are doing in research areas, you will feel that uh, strangulated during this particular degree. So he says that you should not think much. You should have confidence. You should have straight vision, what you want to do. A research area you should know and you should have confidence on you. And you should not bother about those things. If you are thinking so much about that, better don't do it because there will come stages during PhD that he will feel very, very 
pressurized that okay in which direction should i go so these all were the interaction points now i request all of you to come and listen to this wonderful interaction with the professor chaturvedi of iit rudki director iit rudki and i'm very sure you will gain a lot during this interaction so come and let's listen to what he has to say uh welcome professor ajit on your pd education channel and uh, sir i'm honored to uh, interact with you today on this channel thank you thank you for inviting me okay uh, uh professor ajit i made some kind of homework regarding uh, the interaction and i have certain uh, points here which i'll be discussing with you so my first question is normally related to the background of the uh, person so uh, i have seen that sir you are uh, you are btech mtech phd from iit kanpur itself and then you have uh, worked as faculty in iit bhu and then iit rudki and then iit kanpur and then again now you are iit rudki director so my first question to you is normally when you graduated from iit kanpur in 1986 at that time iit graduates used to go abroad and never to come back but you are the case when you prefer to be in india my first question is why that so sir and my next question is you are the uh, person who has seen various iits and a, a extensive experience you have in iit as a faculty also and in administration also so what is your experience in that direction so these two questions are related to first part sir okay so um, uh, during my student days uh, uh, like uh, many youth of the country i wanted also to contribute to my country to my society and uh, we used to debate and discuss that uh, what we can do to make our country great and how to make sure that our countrymen uh, get a good place to live in right sir and uh, we felt that uh, india has a very large number of people who are well educated right sir and um, if that resource uh, can uh, contribute uh, to building the country to uh, to make sure that whatever it has uh, acquired through its education right. it can give back to its country right sir so that was the kind of thought that was uh, driving me and uh, fortunately the area of research which attracted me was not very um, experimental was not uh, in in that sense it was not uh, something that required very high end equipment or facilities which were not available in the it system right sir so uh, the kind of research i wanted to do or what attracted me was available the kind, the resources were available at iit kanpur right sir and so that gave me an additional motivation to stay back right and uh, study in the country and if you study in the country you you get a better idea of the ground reality right sir in terms of doing research right sir. then if you come back and uh, uh, teach as a faculty alone right sir so uh, that helped me in terms of getting grounded and seeing the reality of the phd students and the kind of environment that they face so with that uh, thought i decided to stay back uh, and in retrospect i am happy i did that okay and sir as i uh, discuss with you you have vast experience of iit system from one iit to another iit sir how come iit system is different from rest of the educational institution in india see uh, while there are many good systems in the country and iit is definitely one of them uh, my experience says that in iit system uh, one thing that is very unique is that uh, most people do not think that they they are doing a job or they are employees uh, they believe that this institute is theirs and that they are partners in making this institute uh, grow and that it is their responsibility also to make sure that if there is any weakness if there is any thing something that is not happening correctly that should be corrected right sir and in that sense people have a very hugely participative role right sir they they don't hesitate in reaching out to the uh, functionaries who are responsible uh, and uh, that is why there is a very strong feedback loop in the it system i think that is the core strength uh, which uh, distinguishes itself from other institutes or right. other systems right sir but other uh, systems also have some strengths they are coming up right sir so uh, professor ajit uh, i am here interacting with you and you represent two things number one academician and researcher as professor and another as head of the institute my next question is to the researcher and sir your field of uh, expertise is wireless communication and communication uh, theories and cognitive radios etc what i could understand i want very brief from you sir about your research areas and its scope 
so as you know the current revolution that is digital revolution is powered through communication technologies right sir uh, whether we talk about space uh, whether we talk about uh, uh, satellites right, uh, whether we talk about uh, communication on the ground whether we talk about communication through the underwater right, whether we talk about communication with the mines right, anywhere we have to do communication the need for communication is increasing right. and that means that better quality uh, research is required right, to sir. be able to deliver the kind of uh, potential that communication has right sir unfortunately the economy has grown number of consumers have grown and our regulatory system in the country has been very supportive very right, encouraging sir. to the growth of the telecom sector right sir because of which uh, we see more and more products and services uh, coming forward Right. so my particular research is focused more on what is known as the physical layer okay uh, which which is in terms uh, the requirement that is placed on the spectrum okay. so whenever we talk about the spectrum of radio waves right, uh, whether we talk about the kind of signals that are to be transmitted and the kind of receivers that are to be designed right, so my research is at the design level my research is more at the level of creating a system block diagram system where the basic fundamental in a requirements are met and then the system can be built from that because if you build a system in which some basic uh, requirement of technology is is not satisfied then the system will not work that's so true, from that point of view my research tries to does that right that. Uh, professor ajit we are experiencing a peculiar situation here because of the covid pandemic my next question sir is like uh, this semester is online semester which is first time i think in the history so how it is affecting the learning and the career growth of the students now uh yes uh, students who have difficulty in internet access right sir they are definitely facing some challenges right sir but on the other hand uh, if the student does not face any kind of uh, constraint in terms of accessing internet many of the students seem to be uh, making the most of it in the sense that uh, they are trying to uh, not uh, be in that mode that oh i am not able to understand they are trying to go the extra mile to be able to relate to the class to the teacher so that uh, they can understand and uh, teachers are also putting very huge amount of effort to make sure that they go away from the usual conventional blackboard teaching uh, and get themselves acclimatized and uh, appropriate uh, adjustments being made so that uh, they can their teaching can be effective over the internet right so in that sense both parties have come out of their comfort zones both the teacher as well as the student uh, the kind of uh, reception that the student was accustomed to or the kind of teaching that the teacher was accustomed to that is not possible but my initial reaction is that both parties seem to be adjusting well Uh, except those students who are facing the internet access problems okay uh, professor ajit uh, uh, one my small part related to this was many students are apprehensive related to their jobs because iits students uh, join iits for very good jobs they get through campus placement and all do you think sir it is going to impact the campus placement opportunities for the students no actually it is not campus placement opportunity is less dependent on online or offline education right sir right. it is more dependent on the growth of the economy right sir so right. if the country's economy comes to a huge crisis then that there will be a different situation right sir so that is why at the iits we are not seeing any impact on placements because of covid at right. least not not as of now i cannot say for the future okay uh, sir my next question was related to this only i think you have answered that partially that was whenever there is some challenge there are opportunities also so sir because of this covid uh, uh, what are the various opportunities and uh, good things which has happened to the education system in iit roorkee uh, because of the covid uh good thing of course is that we have relooked at our conventional teaching right sir and we have found that uh, both uh, uh, meetings as as well as classroom teaching right, both is effectively possible without necessarily being physically at the same place earlier that kind of notion was not there that okay it is not possible to have an effective right, meeting or a effective classroom teaching right, unless we are physically in the same room at the same location right sir so that kind of thing has 
now it is very clear that uh, this requirement is not there so in that sense i would say it's a huge uh, positive impact right sir although it's the situation is very bad in terms of covid it's it's a huge uh, misery for the mankind but this positive has come out of this uh, thing um, you may say opportunity or that kind of so, situation where so people sir, are uh, yeah so can we can we expect sir that this online education can be a parallel alternate now and it can become a permanent feature to the education system i i have no doubt in my mind that it is now a feature for there to stay okay good that's good and it is going now to now the the only question that remains is that what percentage of teaching will take place through online right sir and uh, of course uh, the laboratory work lab work experimental work that there is no still substitute to that that's correct sir uh, my next question professor ajit is related to uh, uh, why young and bright students should join uh, engineering and for that matter the courses in engineering and science and further in research what what why they should come to this see it is intellectually very stimulating right, when sir. you are studying physics chemistry right. maths uh, space astronomy Uh, you get very excited about uh, the kind of pursuits of uh, the, the human imagination human That's creativity right. and after all why are we living we right. want we, we want to uh, satisfy our curiosity and, and our intellectual hunger also That's true, sir. That's so true. that is what brings students to engineering and sciences right sir and and i would say that that is the foremost reason why students should come here right, and sir. once they come here and when they start testing that this is so exciting though so interesting and that there are so many more problems to be solved right sir see from a distance uh, sometimes uh, people feel that almost everything is done and nothing remains to be done right sir but the more you study the more you realize that so many things are still not understood right, still sir. not uh, discovered right, still uh, yet to be explained right sir so so if you have to fulfill that uh, that gap Right. you have to go into research that's true so i think it's a very natural thing and many students uh, get driven towards it right sir uh, professor rajit this iit rudki what we call today it all started during british era as thomson engineering college for civil engineers sir i want to ask you that what is the research focus now in iit rudki still more civil engineering or all the domains are new domains also no we are proud of our civil engineering department and right. and our uh, um, uh, history that emanates from civil engineering right sir. in fact we have several departments apart from civil engineering which are intimately connected to civil engineering for example right. uh, department of earthquake engineering department right. of hydrology right sir uh, uh, department of uh, water resources development and management right sir. so we have multiple departments uh, which actually um, are offshoots if i may use the word right, of sir. the department of civil engineering right sir we are very proud of it but what what makes me happy is that now we have many many good departments including the department of civil engineering okay so so we have done quite well in sciences uh, we have very good science departments uh, yes. we have uh, grown into architecture and planning right sir in fact we were one of the first departments in architecture and planning right, our management department will shortly complete uh, silver jubilee right, and 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 it's it is really marching at a very very Uh, fast pace right, uh, we have we have engineering departments chemical metallurgy and all the departments are there traditional uh, mechanical electronics uh, electrical right uh, so so all those uh, uh, engineering departments are there science departments are there humanities is there right, now sir. humanities is also growing humanities and social sciences is growing right, right sir and the uniqueness is that we have uh, also this uh, department in uh, polymer and process engineering Okay. Department of Paper Technology. These are very unique departments. Right, sir. Uh, departments which were which are not there in, in most other uh, IITs. Right, sir. So, in addition to this, we have centers which which draw people from multiple departments. Whether whether it's the Center for Nanotechnology, right, sir. or the Center for uh, Disaster Mitigation and Management, right, sir, uh, or the uh, Center for uh, Transportation Systems, right, sir. So now it it is it's a very big banyan tree. Right. which provides education to very diverse fields uh, large number of departments centers civil engineering being one of them okay sir great uh, professor ajit i will club next two questions because i think they are related sir uh, 
my first question related to that was uh, how can we attract bright students for higher education let's say ms and phd and sir what uh, about pia mera prime minister research fellowship and all so can these kind of scholarship be offered and all so that uh, students are attracted to higher education domains uh that's a very very good question you have asked uh, it's a question that is trying to get answered for 2 3 decades now because uh, we want more and more research to happen we want more and more bright students to come to our higher education system right, and pmrf is definitely a very laudable scheme in that direction right sir. which which has attracted some of the best students to stay back and uh, continue their phd phd work in in the in the country right sir uh, i think uh, it is it is like a the more success we taste the more it will happen right sir so we need many more international success stories from the country right sir uh, whether in terms of engineering innovations whether in terms of science discoveries uh, whether in terms of fabrication whether in terms of manufacturing if we do more such uh, discoveries more such inventions more commercialization of uh, uh, research done in academic institutes i think more students will get attracted to it right. so it is not just a one dimensional thing that uh, it is only dependent on the scholarship scholarship is definitely one of the very important things right. but that alone is not uh, enough right. to transform the complete higher education system so that the best minds the brightest minds get attracted to it right sir uh, professor ajit uh, my this question is little i, I think out of the way i, I may say uh, i was interacting with one of the vice chancellor sir and uh, he i asked him that why students do not go for phd one of his answer was that after phd students do not get that much of post doctorate fellowship in india as they get abroad so what is your take on that sir no students do not go for phd the answer i think is uh, probably that Uh, for many students uh, uh, the reason for going to up to pre phd education is to get a job right sir and if they get a job then they don't feel motivated enough to go for right, one more degree right, especially sir. a degree in which the time duration is not fixed right sir see unlike uh, all other degrees in right, the sir. phd degree there is no fixed time duration that's true sir so there is some inherent uncertainty inbuilt into the phd degree. program that's true so that also acts as a deterrent and people people are if i may use the word um, not sure what is phd right so right so if if you enter the phd field what do you get out of it and how do you survive in that program and whether you will be successful or not right, those sir. kinds of questions also act as deterrents right sir so 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 sometimes uh, we used to say that if you are thinking about doing phd don't do it okay <laughs> that's true sir so so that so that means it comes naturally to people right, and sir. if you start thinking about phd then don't do it no no do it so sir what what is your take on post doctorate fellowships if you can comment on that uh, yes it is very important to improve the research culture in in laboratories in right, in sir. educational uh, laboratories in the country right sir uh, and also it is a very good system in which uh, hand holding takes place of uh, phd students and other right. students Right, because sir. there is a complete uh, chain of students right, starting from fresh students to very senior students who can right, do sir. the mentoring and can do the induction program right sir uh, but uh, it it has to become more funding based that right. means more sponsored research funding has to come into the system right, which sir. can support post doctoral fellowships right sir. institutions alone cannot support cannot. a large number of post doctoral fellowships right uh, so that is uh, more like how much sponsored funding is available and right. of course the government is increasing the cake in terms of size of the cake is increasing in terms of availability of funds but i would say still it is far behind than what a country of our size needs so if i'm not wrong sir it is also related somewhere to the industry academy interaction also and uh, uh, professor ajit what uh, one uh, gap do we find is like industries have their problems for which they want some solution on the other hand researchers and academicians in the universities and iits have the solution they have the intellectual property but that does not get commercialized so how to plug uh, professor ajit this gap how can this gap be plugged yeah so it is like uh, what i sometimes say expectation mismatch right sir so both parties expect more from the other okay so so the industry wants a completely finished product which is uh, 
in which it is sort of ready to be uh, fabricated, manufactured, everything done. And academia feels that the moment the proof of concept is there, the academic curiosity is gone. The intellectual uh, satisfaction of having done something interesting and good is done. And if a research paper or a patent has to come out of it, that has also been done. Okay. So they don't feel uh, excited enough to go beyond that proof of concept in the lab. Right, sir. So, so it is uh, that kind of situation. And so one answer of that is that if more and more um, students and faculty create their own companies. Okay. That is why the startup culture is very important. Okay. Because if, if they feel that this is my product, this is my invention, and the success of the product will be defined in terms of its success in the market. Okay. How, how much commercial success that it gets. Okay. Right. Then uh, that will be a new yardstick to measure the success. Okay. Current yardsticks are in terms of patents and quality publications. Right. The current yardsticks are not in terms of commercial success. Okay. So if that yardstick starts changing, the gap will become narrowing down. Okay. Uh, Professor Rajit, my next question was related to startup culture only in IIT Roorkee. Uh, so uh, we have a very vibrant startup culture. Uh, in fact, a large number of students uh, participate in it. Uh, we we have every week uh, we have this uh, newsletter that comes out about the current uh, news in terms of the entrepreneurship opportunities in the country, how the startups are doing, how IIT Roorkee alumni are doing, right, sir. And uh, we have an entrepreneurship cell. Right, uh, we have an associate dean which, who right, focuses sir. only on innovation and incubation. Right, we sir. have a tides incubator which is managed by a chief uh, executive officer CEO. Right, so, so the culture is very deeply entrenched uh, in the last, I would say, five years. It has become very, very strong. Okay. And we already see a lot of startups coming out of it. Um, some startups have graduated, migrate, migrated to out of Rukki and uh, doing quite well. And if you look at our distinguished young alumnus awards, both last year as well as this year, uh, you will see that all the young alumnus awards have gone to entrepreneurs who are, who are students of IIT Rukki who chose entrepreneurship as their profession when they graduated. Okay. So, so, so it, that shows that it's, it's really growing stronger and stronger. So they are becoming the more role models, sir. Now. Yes, you're right. You're right. Yeah. They're serving as a role model. Okay. And many That's, students are coming forward. Right. Uh, Professor Rajit, uh, because of this COVID situation, uh, uh, when can we expect offline classes in the campus, sir? And is there any change in the schedule next semester, which we call winter admission in MS and PhD programs? So is it going to be at the same time, sir? See, uh, when the pandemic started, we were thinking it is a 15-day affair, three weeks affair. Right, and within one month, uh, things will get back to normal. And, and we were hoping that even the final exams of the previous semester would be done, physical Right, students sir. coming back on the campus. Right, sir. This was not too distant future. Right, sir. But but how it unfolded was very different. Right, sir. And uh, it was completely sort of something uh, very few, hardly anybody would have thought that way. Right, sir. So it's very difficult to predict even now okay. that how it is going to unfold. Okay. Uh, when the number of cases has plateaued in the country, but it is still not significantly coming down. And uh, the vaccine trials are at an advanced stage, but again, there is no vaccine which is in the market or which the government is starting to uh, distribute. So in that sense, I think it's very difficult to predict uh, the next semester now. Okay, I think we are every two weeks, the situation is changing and accordingly, we will have to take a call. Okay. Sir, we have uh, IIT Roorkee has campuses in Saharanpur also and Greater Noida also. So what is the logic of these campuses, sir, and uh, why these are created? Ah, very good question. So actually, uh, there was an institute of paper technology in Saharanpur campus, which got merged with the University of Roorkee. Okay. So, so Saharanpur campus was not created out of University of Roorkee, but it merged with the University of Roorkee because of physical proximity. Okay. So that is how it became part of uh, IIT Roorkee. Right, sir. And, and we are very proud of that campus because, uh, in fact, last year, one of the distinguished alumnus awardees was from that campus. Okay, great. And, and and that is the campus we are doing where we are doing this uh, both paper technology as well as polymer process and engineering. And we are also running a packaging program. Great. So very unique things are happening in that Sarnpur campus. Okay. Regarding the Greater Noida campus, there was a need to have a foothold in the NCR region. Okay. And when the UP government came forward in the first decade of this uh, century, that uh, a, a lap plot of land is available. So IIT Roorkee chose to grab on that opportunity. 
right, and uh, get a foothold in the NCR region. So okay. that is the reason why we created a Greater Noida campus. But Greater Noida campus is mainly used for extension activities, not okay. for regular teaching. Regular teaching. Okay. Uh, Professor Rajit, my next question is related to DST Asia Africa Initiative of IIT Rudki. So this is actually a, a World Bank initiative right. in which uh, DST uh, is uh, driving that initiative and IIT Rudki was chosen by DST to lead this initiative. Right, sir. Um, and the, one of the reasons why IIT Rudki was chosen was because IIT Rudki has the maximum number of international students among all the IITs. Right, sir. So given our legacy in terms of internationalization and the number of students coming from different countries, so we were a natural choice for this kind of program. Right, sir. And uh, here the World Bank uh, provides funds so right. that uh, the African centers of excellence, right, sir. They, uh, they can be, uh, I mean, some handholding can be done for them in right, terms sir. of academic programs, in terms of their PhD programs. So there is exchange program teachers going from here to there right, from sir. multiple institutes, not only for IIT rookie, this right, uh, seven institutes are involved. Right, and similarly, sir. students coming from African countries and spending time in the campus. But again, this COVID has disrupted all the travel and right. those exchange programs are currently interrupted. Okay. Uh, my next question to you was related to student exchange program only, sir. If you can throw some light on that. So uh, we believe that uh, we would like to have more and more students uh, yes. coming from different universities on the campus. Right, the sir. presence of students from different universities improves the diversity quotient on the campus. Right. And that improves the experience of all the students. Right, sir. And similarly, our students also should uh, try to go abroad and sp spend some time in other campuses, in other right, universities' sir. campuses, right, so sir. that their also upbringing and education improves. Right, and right, they sir. can bring back some new things that they learn from there back to our campus. Right, sir. So with that thing in mind, uh, we promote uh, these exchange programs. Right, and uh, number of students uh, uh, are not only at the undergraduate level, but also at master's and PhD, we are having exchange programs. Okay. And the number of exchange programs has, has increased. But again, I would say that uh, the COVID has disrupt, the, disturbed this also. entire process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope that it will rebound back and come, come back to normal very soon. Uh, Professor Ajit, my last question to you is very, very straight question, sir. And uh, that question is because today we have many IITs, sir, and they, all IITs are very, very, they are doing very good also. So why some student who aspires to be in higher education, say MS, MTech, PhD, should join IIT Roorkee? So IIT Roorkee is, provides a holistic experience. I mean, it's a very unique campus. The large number of student population from different departments provide an experience that is not difficult to find in many other places in the country. Right, we are also close to the Himalayas. We provide that uniqueness closer to the nature and closer to Himalayas. We have a very strong history, uh, which we are very proud of. We are close to the this upper Ganges canal. Right, uh, again, that, that's something that attracts many people, many students. And in terms of uh, the research culture and the amount of time that students and faculty are able to spend in their laboratories is very high in IIT Rookie because there are not many distractions around. Right. So once in a while you go around, uh, go to a place, uh, say Himalayas or something, but otherwise 24 cross 7 people are engrossed in their work. Okay. And uh, because Rookie town is not very big, to, yeah. so not many places to go. Yes, so sir. it provides an opportunity to immerse yourself in your work. And when you get completely immersed, I think wonderful things happen and that That's, is what is happening. That is the environment required in these kind of institutions. Yes. yes. Uh, Professor Rajit, I have come to an end of my entire questionnaire, sir. And I'm really thankful to you, sir, for giving your uh, time to us. And I'm very sure this is going to help lakhs of the youngsters, technocrats in the country and abroad also. Thanks Thank a lot, you. sir, and wish you a good health. Thank you. My pleasure. My Thanks. pleasure. Thank you.